You're listening to Your Purpose and Business Podcast, where we connect you to possibilities. I'm your host, Raquel Walters, a two-time best-selling author, millennial speaker, corporate trainer, advocate, and clinical social worker at heart. Your Purpose and Business Podcast will connect you with everyday successful people who will share their impactful stories, insights, challenges, failures, and triumphs on how they're navigating the working world, whether by climbing the 95 corporate ladder or starting, growing, and scaling their business. So grab your pen and notebook because you'll want to implement the nuggets and tools strategies shared in every episode. Class is in session. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Your Purpose and Business Podcast. I'm your host Raquel Walters and I'm here today with Octavia Connor. Octavia, um, after spending 10 years in corporate America helping to build multi-million dollar businesses as the go-to numbers girl, Octavia decided to ditch the nine to five in 2011 and build her dream business instead. With a laptop, a busted printer, nominal savings, but full of passion, Octavia embarked on a journey of providing businesses with advanced financial management support, strategies, and solutions. Her passion led to the birth of Say Yes to Profits, a virtual CFO firm that helps businesses um, have more money, more profits, and pay less taxes. Typically, her clients grow between 30% and 350%. 50 percent within 12 months and save over 60 percent in business taxes selected as a top 50 accountant in north america and an award-winning best-selling author and professional speaker octavia combines over 14 years of business and finances experience her mission is to eradicate small business failure in north america and help businesses earn their first or next million dollars sooner than they think. All right, so Octavia, oh my gosh, it is an honor and a privilege to have you on the Your Purpose and Business podcast, welcome. Thank you, thank you. I'm super excited to be here today. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, you're, you're very welcome, Octavia. And um, let's just dive in a little bit, sort of like a, a icebreaker. Your bio is so beautiful and I love your mission of um, helping so many more persons. But tell us something about yourself that um, is not included in the bio. Well, um, I often joke that I have the starting five of a basketball team because mm-hmm. I have four kids and a bonus daughter. So <laughs> I don't think that's in my bio. That, that's amazing. And um, so I know that um, you have a family. You just shared with us. Thank you. You're working um, your business full time. You're helping so many clients. I mean, um, tell us uh, what purpose do you think you have in this world? And I know this is a big question, but are you living your purpose, Octavia? I believe I am living my purpose. I well. First, I believe that my purpose is multifaceted, um, life and business and some other things. But as far as business, yes, I absolutely feel like I'm living my purpose only because of the journey that I went through in my business and how I can look back on that journey as they say, uh, hindsight, I think it's 2020. So I can look back on it and see why I went through the things that I went through and it only has helped me relate to other businesses when they're going through that and has helped me give them not only the strategy, but the emotional side to how to have more money, more profits, and of course, pay less taxes in their business. So yes, I think I am living my purpose. Yes, yes, absolutely. And um, when it comes on to tax- taxes as business owners, I mean, uh, we're all looking for different ways in which we can save, but also pay Uncle Sam, because we all know that Uncle Sam, the IRS will definitely come after us. But um, tell me, take us on a summarized journey. Um, prior to you um, leaving your nine to five and, and, and branching out full time into starting your, your business, I mean, what was that like for you working? If you could take us back a little bit, working in your nine to five job if you wanted to tell us a little bit more about your background there and what really led you to take that leap into transitioning into becoming your own boss your own ceo 
Well, I had been in corporate America for several years and I had climbed the corporate ladder. And unfortunately, every single day felt like I was doing the same thing over and over again, no change, nothing exciting. And it actually got to the point where I would literally walk in the office every morning looking at my watch, hoping, praying, and wishing five o'clock would come because I didn't want to be there. And I was the accounting manager. And I had a real, as I call it, sister girl attitude because I didn't want to be there. And I knew, you know, if something didn't change, they were probably after a while going to get rid of me. So I started praying, seeking guidance, and around that time, my sister, who owns her very own uh, daycare center here in Atlanta, um, was expanding to another location, and she needed someone to help with the accounting and the taxes and the bookkeeping, and she asked me to help her part-time. So I was working at corporate and I was helping her. And that's when I was bit by the entrepreneur bug, as they say. And I started networking and finding more clients. And I would give her strategies and we would see the results. And it was mind blowing. And I was like, well, if I can do this for her, I know I can do this for other businesses because it's nothing like working for your family. So after a while, I just said, um, I continued to pray. I got my answer. The answer was yes. And I took a leap of faith and jumped out there. That that's that's amazing. And it just goes to show that um, you know, your sister starting her business and needing your help, it validated your need in the marketplace, so to speak, right? Because um you were able to to help her with her accounting, her taxes. Those are the things that you were doing in corporate America in your nine to five that became boring for you, but you were able um to to use that knowledge that you already have, the expertise that you already have, and um be able to to branch out. So, so that is amazing. I mean, a lot of times, you know, um, as you know, um, millennials, um, it, it doesn't matter if you're a millennial or not, but someone working a nine to five, wanting to create, whether it is a side income or wanting to eventually one day transition over into, um, you know, working for themselves, you know, they're thinking that they need to reinvent the wheel, but you didn't do so, Octavia. You use the knowledge that you already have, the, the skill sets that you already have, right? Right, exactly. Um, The difference was, like I said, in corporate, it was the same thing every day. With a small business owner, we go through a lot. So it's not the same thing. Um, And then when you're working with different business owners, you're experiencing different things. And even though I was bored in corporate America, I still loved accounting and bookkeeping and believe it or not, taxes. I still love those things. So to to realize that, well, a company on a smaller scale that I can be more personable with needs my help and they're actually benefiting from it. Yeah, that was amazing. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so it just goes to show that you know a lot of persons think that they per- their purpose, so to speak, in, in the context of a job or career, that it needs to change if they're getting bored or just feeling unfulfilled or unappreciated or whatever the feeling is um, that they're currently having um, on their job in the nine to five. That they need to, to 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 go out there and find something else to do, which is wasn't the case for you. Um, so I was happy. I'm happy to hear that you were able to transition those skills into working um you know on a larger level providing more value to the different business owners that you were working with so you know so octavia tell us about you know in that transition because a lot of times um persons you know look at uh, business owners such as yourself or um you know social media is huge right now and um they're thinking oh my god you know i i would love to do something like that for myself to create a business um for myself but um you know i have these fears and doubts what if it fail what if it doesn't work out what if i don't generate income from it i mean with your process and your journey and your experiences um how was was that process of transitioning um once you finally decided that now is the time to leave my job and branch out fully what did that look like for you if you don't mind sharing with, with the audience yeah of course I don't mind sharing it all so I call that period 
my broke, busted, and disgusted breakthrough period. Um, because when I first jumped out into the world of entrepreneurship, I left a company where I was making close to six figures. And, you know, I was bit by the entrepreneur bug and really start to enjoy entrepreneurship. So I figured, oh, in no time, I'll be at six figures again. But the mistakes that I made is that I didn't really plan I just received my yes and I jumped out there. So I went from earning six figures, close to six figures in corporate America to a negative $152 in my bank account. Mm -hmm. And of course, to anyone that's like, how did I get here? I received a yes, what, what happened? So I call it broke, busted and disgusted and breakthrough because my journey didn't stop there. I actually experienced eventually a multi six figure breakthrough in my business, but there were several things that I had to do in order to get out of that broke, busted and disgusted period. Period, right, right. And thank you for sharing that with us. I mean, if you don't mind telling us a little bit of some of the challenges, if you face one or two, um, you know, um, because I, I believe that, you know, um, aspiring entrepreneurs, um, they need to know that, you know, it's not all glamorous um, when it comes on to, you know, um, chasing after your dream. I mean, starting your business, right, and running it and, and, and it being profitable. So if you don't mind just sharing one or two challenges and lessons that, that you've learned throughout that process process throughout that time? Sure. Um, one of the challenges was my mindset. Um, I didn't really have the money mindset, the confidence needed in order to build the business of my dreams. So I had to overcome my money challenges, my money blocks, and then I had to build confidence in myself to be able to go out and find new clients and present myself as the authority in order for them to say, yes, I want to work with you. So that was the first thing. The second thing was that even though I was an accountant and I had all these years of experience and I was managing the books for some pretty large companies, I wasn't managing my own books mm -hmm. so oftentimes I spent the money before it hit the bank account you know um I didn't have I wasn't planning for taxes I, I didn't have enough money to market um I was really just not managing my money correctly I hadn't reconciled my books or anything like that I had to then overcome that as well once I was able to overcome both of those challenges and put processes and procedures in place, then my company started to take off. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. I mean, that's two important things. I mean, mindset is everything. And from time to time, I mean, our brains will tell us, our minds will tell us that, you know, this is not going to work out. We're not good enough. There's fail failures um, that 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 you think that you can't rise up, <laughs> you know, beyond or above. And um, it is good that you also learn that you needed to set up processes and systems in place. Because oftentimes, Octavia, think about it. If you can remember back on your job, I mean, I'm pretty sure you excelled at, at your duties. I mean, you were managing multi-million dollar portfolios um, for, you know, your clients. But at the same time, sometimes in our lives, we neglect that we need to do the same thing if it applies um, to, to our daily life, which was managing your books with regards to your business, right? Okay. And ensuring that, you know, you're setting up yourself, building the proper um, foundation so that you can, you know, um, help your business to grow by investing properly, but also obviously have to be um, monitoring that budget that you have right because exactly. as we know as we know I mean um, leaving the nine to five which for a lot of people it's comfortable that it's you know quote unquote that you know um, paycheck that's coming in every every two weeks or monthly um, but branching out into entrepreneurship land if I should use that word it's a little bit different because now you, as a small business owner you're the marketer you're the accountant you know you are the bookkeeper um, you are you know the assistant the, the, you know you are everything for that business until you can hire out help to, to, to help you to grow it so I think that it's important Important when it comes down to your purpose and business um, is that, you know, persons recognize that it's a lot of work that's in, in, involved, not that it cannot be done, but um, you really need to um, be clear on what you're getting into and setting up yourself the right way. And um, even for Octavia, um, 
audience, Octavia is an important asset when it comes on to starting out your business. No matter how small you think your business is, at the end of the day, money is important yes. in order to operate that business and um, to grow it and to sustain it over time because a business without making money is simply just a hobby, right? Yes. So, 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 so um, you're so much valued in the marketplace and um, that is why your clients love you. And so, Octavia, tell us, tell us about um, your business. Um, share with us um, the name of your company and how it is that you help your everyday, um, you know, small business owners. So the name of my business is Say Yes to Profits, and we are a virtual CFO firm. We serve businesses all over North America. Our goal is to help consultants and service-based entrepreneurs have more money, more profits, and pay less taxes. Now, we're not like your traditional accountants. We don't just enter numbers in an accounting system and give you a piece of paper and then send you on your way and you're like, I don't know what to do with it. Our difference is that we educate our clients. Um, we meet with them consistently. We plan their, their, like if a client comes and says to me, they wanna earn a million dollars, I'm gonna map out that plan. And then we're gonna hold them accountable and tie the numbers to that plan so that they get to their goal faster, smarter and consistently. And mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. We do everything accounting, um, bookkeeping, payroll, taxes. But again, like I said, we combine all of that with financial consulting. I mean, I, I, I love it because I'm here looking at your stats and, and you were able to help um, your clients grow from 30 to 350 percent within a year of working with you. In addition to saving 60 percent in um, business taxes, that is more than half. That is huge. Yes. And so um, speak to that, if you may, um, because I think that that's important and it should be highlighted um, um let, let's go like speak to that because um, i think i think that um it's it, it's very much needed um people need to to know um how it is that, that you can help them in their business and save on taxes so basically what we do is look at the foundation of the company mm -hmm. um one of the things that i've noticed over the years that hinders business owners from either earning the first million or the next million is their service model. A lot of times business owners feel like they have to have 12 different services, 90 different products just to make a million dollars. And that's not true. So the first thing that we do is really either modify or build their service model so that they work less, charge more and scale faster. And then once we get them on that journey, we take a look at their finances and we're literally saying, you know, this is what you should charge. This is what you should pay for. And when we align the payment, like if they have tax deductions, we're looking at what tax deductions is going to yield the highest return, right? What tax deduction is going to help them keep the most money in their business so they know how to strategically spend their money. We also put them on something that I call a profit plan where they're able to, in a very simple way, save more money in their business. And our goal for all of our clients is to get them to the point where they have four to six months of cash reserve saved at all times. So we put them on that plan that enables them to get there. And then with all of that, we're holding them accountable. So literally we call and we talk to them consistently about their money habits, what they're doing, what they're not doing. It's funny because I had a client tell me, she said, Octavia, I was out and I was about to spend some money and I heard your voice in the back of my head saying, uh-uh-uh, that's not going to benefit your business. And she didn't do it. So we do all of that and then we're looking at their taxes consistently because I feel like I don't have an Uncle Sam I don't want you to have an Uncle Sam so let's figure out right. how to beat the IRS at their own game and right absolutely. Yeah, that's it that's amazing because as you were talking I was thinking about 
I haven't come across and I've been in business over five years and I've worked with some of the top mentors in the industry, but I haven't come across a business model such as yours or say yes to profits because a lot of times, I mean, persons will probably look to you as just the consultant, right? Um, just the numbers lady, but your business is more than that. As you spoke on it, it's holistic. Like what are your profit margins? Making sure that you're, you're um, you know, you're filing taxes on time based on, you know, your, your, your um, business, whether you're LLC, quarterly tax, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're looking at the whole picture and the fact that you were saying that your client actually, you know, going out um, to, to, to spend some money actually heard your voice to say, no, 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 probably like really think about the spending mm -hmm. <laughs> before you spend. It just um, speaks to the value that you serve um, when it comes on to managing money and properly budgeting out and also making sure that you're reserving um, that profit and putting aside for, for taxes as well. And ultimately um, helping um, these business owners to, to save and to also lower their, their taxes as well. So I just wanna say um, kudos, congratulations, continue to do the work that you, that you are doing because I think that um, it is much needed in the marketplace. And I, and to be honest with you, I love to say yes to profits. I mean, it's like, yes, more money, <laughs> more money. Exactly. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, but yes, more money helping more people along the way. So that's awesome. So so Octavia, if you could share with us um, any advice or recommendations or, or steps that persons um, can, can um, you know, focus on when it is that they're trying to achieve their entrepreneurial goals, or if they're already in business, what are, what are some of the recommendations that you would tell them in order to, um, to sustain? Well, one of the first things I would recommend is to create a plan, but not just any plan. Um, I do something with my with myself and my clients. Um, I call it goal casting, where basically I look where I want to be and then I reverse engineer it. So if I want to be, I don't know, if a business owner wants to be at $2 million, um, look at that business at the $2 million phase um, or place, and then think about, well, if I'm earning $2 million today, who will I have on my team? What will my processes be? And what will I do every single day, right? And of course, you're not there yet, but you know your team, you know your processes, you know what your prices need to be to reach that $2 million. So now you start to work towards that every day. So the first step mm -hmm. I would say is plan, but strategically plan. Um, also take massive major actions. A lot of times business owners will create a plan and then it'll just sit on their computer and they never look at it again. And then they wonder a year later, why, why are they in the same position as before? So you want to take actions. You want to remain consistent. And then one of the biggest things is to track your progress. Numbers do not lie. I say that all the time. If you're looking at your progress, your numbers are going to tell you if you've been consistent, if you are hitting your marks, if you're off your marks. Like look at your progress along the way and then capitalize off of the things that you've done well. Learn from your mistakes and improve those. And before you know it, you'll be there. Wherever the there is, you'll be there. That's awesome. That, that's, a, that's amazing advice, Octavia. So tell us um, a little bit more. Do you have any, um, you know, specials coming up or how can persons connect with you to work with Say Yes to Profits? Well, um, you can find me in on all social media platforms at Say Yes to Profits. I am also on Instagram at Octavia Connor underscore. We do monthly virtual lunch and learns where each month we come on for about 45 minutes and go over topics and strategies on how to help businesses have more money, more profits, and pay less taxes. Um, and then also, if you go to my website at sayyestheprofits.com and click on the resources tab, you'll find several free, um, we call them more money tools that will help you have more money, basically help you say yes to profits. And yeah, that's it. 
Yeah, definitely, um, everyone. You want to go over um, to say yes to profits.com, especially if you're just starting out, you know, um, or an aspiring business owner. Um, definitely, those money tools will will help you to, you know, develop a plan and a framework in in how it is that that you can um manage your money or monitor your money, right? Um, when you are starting out, and of course, definitely, um, you would want to um hire um Octavia to to help you um with you know your your knowledge numbers um, in, in your business because that's super important. I cannot stress it enough. So Octavia, on a personal level, uh, I mean, there's so much going on in the world right now. Um, and, you know, you're juggling family and work and, um, you know, all these things in between. Um, is there any sort of um, routine or rituals that you use on a day-to-day -day basis um, just to keep you grounded and level-headed? Yes. Um, for one, on Saturdays, I do no work. I shut down everything um, because I don't want to, of course, experience burnout or you just need some time away. So I absolutely do, do no work on Saturdays. Before COVID, every month, at least once a month, I would go for a full day at the spa. I can't wait to start that over yes, again because yes. that was amazing. Um, and then just reading books. And sometimes even if it's not a Saturday, you just cut your computer off, cut everything off and you saw and let it all go and know that the next day is a day to try again. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I, I love it. I mean, I love spa days too. Um, but I, I love the fact that you said every Saturday, so you have a day that that is dedicated to rest or to just do whatever it is that you want to do on that day. So I, I definitely love that. Um, is there anything else that you would want to um to add to, to what you just said or overall um you know speak to 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 you know your business and um and how it is that you know, you could just leave inspiration or or advice um, to the audience overall. Yes, you know, I just want to tell everyone to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, it can be hard. It can be challenging. And sometimes, honestly, you have to clap for yourself mm -hmm. because a lot of people are not going to clap for you. Um, there have been several times where I do weekly YouTube videos. I had one, two, five, ten views, but it's okay mm -hmm. because you want to keep going. You want to know what your plan is, know what your purpose, and know that your time is coming. And I, and I often say, and I wrote about this in my book, put blinders on. Don't be fooled by social media and and the glitz and the glamour that you see because a lot of times uh, business owners are not telling you the behind the scenes truth so know that just because it looks great it may not be great or it may be great but they may be on step 50 and you're on step 30 so don't you know don't judge yourself don't compare yourself and just keep going and don't give up and I want to make sure I say celebrate your wins, yes. celebrate your wins. That's very important. No matter how big or small, celebrate your wins, put your wins up around you. Like I wish I could show my office right now. I have my clients pictures and testimonies and things that I've done all around me so that when I'm down, I can look and say, you know what? I got this. This is just right. one day, one hour. I can keep going. I love it. And it also serves as a reminder that, you know, you are needed and you have people out there, you know, waiting for, for, for you to support them in their businesses and in life as well. So thank you so much for that, Octavia. It's been a pleasure to interview you on here. Um, her website and Instagram links will be in the show notes. And remember, guys, as always, be good to yourself and I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you've loved this episode, let's stay in touch. Head over to RaquelWalters.com and subscribe to my email list so that I can send you updates on new episodes, exclusive motivational nuggets, and insider knowledge that's only shared when you join our community. Please don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and leave a review as I want to know your thoughts about every episode. Follow me on Instagram at Your Purpose and Business Podcast. Remember, your life is beautiful and this is a part of your journey. So embrace it. Speak to you soon.